This is the third and final video on basic centrality measures for networks. In our last video, we talked about degree centrality, close to centrality, and between the centrality. Today, we will put these measures into practice by looking at a classic network example from 2003. As a reminder, here are the intuitive ways to think about these three measures. First, degree centrality measures how many links you have. Second, closeness centrality measures how centrally located you are in the network. And third, betweenness centrality measures how important you are for the flow of information through the network. So let's see what these centrality measures can tell us about the social dynamics of a group of dolphins living in Doubtful Sound, New Zealand. This network appears in a collaboration between David Lousseau, a biologist, and Mark Newman, an applied physicist. Their data came from seven years of research observations, including a tally of which dolphins were spotted together. Lousseau and Newman used this data to create a dolphin social network. They joined two dolphins by an edge if they were seen together more frequently than random chance would predict. So here is the resulting network. What do our three centralities tell us? Try to guess the top scores in each of our metrics, degree centrality, close to centrality, and between the centrality. Of course, this network is really too big to analyze by hand or by eye, so just use your intuitive understanding of these measures to estimate who the important players might be. So pause the video and give it a go. So let's look at three different visualizations of this dolphin network, one for each of our centrality measures. First, we size and color the vertices according to degree centrality. And when we do this, we can see that the larger group of dolphins have more high degree individuals. And in particular, the three most popular dolphins are far removed from the second and smaller group of dolphins over here. And then in the smaller group, there are some popular dolphins there too, but there's only one of them, B scratch, that actually has connections outside of the smaller group. Next, we size and color the vertices according to closeness centrality. And this measure is biased towards the larger community as well. And of course, this makes sense since that's where most of the dolphins are found. But we also see something interesting. This dolphin SN100 has the highest closeness centrality, even though they do not have high degree. Finally, we're going to size and color the vertices using betweenness centrality. And this visualization tells a profoundly different story. There's only two dolphins that really stand out here, SN100 and B scratch. So apparently these are the dolphins who are holding this social network together. So we applied our three centrality measures to this dolphin network, and we found some popular dolphins and some cohesive dolphins. Lousseau and Newman draw particular attention to dolphin SN100 in their paper. Apparently, the network fractured when that dolphin disappeared for an extended period of time. And they cite this convergence of network structure with observed behavior as evidence that the network perspective is a valuable tool in understanding the social dynamics of these mammals.